Cognitive psychology is the study of extrasensory perception, or ESP, and psychokinesis. There are three main types of ESP. Telepathy, which is perception of another's thoughts without the use of the senses. Clairvoyance, which is perception of objects not present through the senses. And precognition, which is perception of future events without the use of the senses. Psychokinesis is the ability to affect physical objects without the use of the body. These phenomena are often grouped together under the heading of PSI phenomena. In 1930, Joseph Banks Ryan began his research into PSI phenomena just 25 miles away from me at Duke University. Using a deck of cards designed by a colleague, Ryan tried to determine if it was possible for a subject to correctly identify the symbols on a card without coming into sensory contact with them. In 1934, Ryan published his findings in his book entitled Extrasensory Perception. Out of nearly 100,000 attempts, Ryan's subjects averaged 7.1 correct identifications per run since only five correct identifications per run would be expected by chance, the odds against Ryan's results being due to chance were well over a Google to one. On the basis of this research, Ryan concluded that there must be some form of non-physical energy at work. But is Ryan's conclusion really the best explanation of the evidence? The criteria of simplicity and conservatism tells us that when we are attempting to explain something, we should not accept an extraordinary hypothesis if an ordinary one will do. Ryan's research, however, can be fully explained in terms of quite ordinary forms of information transfer. Given all of the opportunities for sensory leakage, there is no reason to believe that anything extrasensory was going on. The best explanation of Ryan's results, then, is that the subjects either consciously or unconsciously sense the identity of the cards by ordinary means. If Ryan's energy really does exist, then others should be able to detect it in the same sorts of situations that Ryan did. In other words, it should be repeatable by others. However, even the same researchers using the same subjects can't achieve similar results every time. Parapsychologists have their own explanation for the inability of others to replicate their experiments. One of the most common is the sheep-goat effect. According to this hypothesis, the results of PSI experiments are influenced by the attitudes of the experimenter. When the experimenter doubts the existence of PSI, in other words, a goat, the experiment won't succeed. When the experimenter believes in the existence of PSI, in other words, a sheep, the experiment will succeed. But what about experimenters like Jay Crumbaugh and John Beloff, who claim they began their research as sheep, but say the facts made them goats? Don't they demonstrate that the sheep-goat effect is mistaken? Not exactly. See, the argument holds that while the experimenter may have consciously believed in PSI, they must have unconsciously doubted it. The ad hoc nature of this hypothesis is obvious. There's no data that could ever count against it. Every counterexample can be explained away by claiming unconscious doubt. This results in an untestable hypothesis. Some parapsychology experiments do appear to have been successful. However, none are consistently repeatable, which is a cornerstone of science. Additionally, many of the most impressive experiments have turned out to be fraudulent. And because of this, parapsychology is a pretender.